Hello everybody and welcome to World of Nintendo and welcome to World of Nintendo here at PAX, wherever he may be. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Joshua Rogers. I'm a student at Swinburne University in Australia, but I've been living in Poland for the past two years, which is where I'm presenting this from. I'm super interested in the NES and have been collecting NES games and digging up history about the NES for years and years. I've been slowly working on a book describing all of my research, which I can only hope is finished soon. You can find me on Twitter. I don't post much, but if anything really important happens in relation to my research, I might post it there. Who knows? You can also find me on LinkedIn, which is where I do post some blogs about the stuff I'm interested in and recommend uh, following me there. I want to give a huge shout out to Video Maniac 1994 with whom without his preliminary research into the topic of Nintendo in Eastern Europe would mean this presentation would not exist today. Again, a huge thank you to him. So, what is this all about? Well, I'm super interested in looking at places around the world where the NES was released, which is not the US and Japan. Generally, that's seen as Australia and Western Europe, basically the first world power regions. A few years ago, I presented at PAX Australia discussing the brief history of the NES being released around the world, focusing on Australia. I explained that when the NES was released, Nintendo utilised their 10 NES lockout chip with segregated parts of the world in terms of which consoles would work with which game. That meant basically that a game sold in, say, America wouldn't work on a console from England. Nintendo really took this to the extreme though. Not only did they segregate America from Europe, but they also split Europe into two regions, PAL-A and PAL-B. PAL-A games wouldn't work on PAL-B consoles and vice versa. Another lockout chip was also used in parts of Asia, such as Hong Kong, Singapore and India, with Korea for some reason using the PAL-B region rather than the Asian region lockout, likely due to the relationship being with Nintendo of Europe, not Nintendo of Japan. I would guess for political reasons. The PAL-B lockout chip was basically used everywhere else, that is, everywhere except for the PAL-A region, Asian region, and North and South American region. From continental Europe to Israel and even South Africa, it was basically the fallback lockout chip for the PAL regions. In the presentation at PAX Australia, I showed this map. This outlined my belief of the NES's releases around the world. The blue colour represented what is commonly cited as the NTSC lockout chip region and the red PAL-B, the green PAL-A and the yellow the Asian region. Remember, this is about the lockout chip being used, not the geographic location, as we can see by both South Africa and South Korea being red. Since then, I have published the history of the release of the NES in South Africa, something that seemed to have been forgotten about since it was released in 1993. Research continues on other regions, however, slowly. The forces that be don't particularly help in terms of distribution of this sort of information either. For example, when trying to add the international release date to the Wikipedia page for the NES, I was met with this revert from an administrator. As en.wiki, we only worry about the releases in English-speaking regions and Japan. Despite the fact that South Africa is obviously English speaking, the release date for the NES was removed from Wikipedia in that country. Likewise, the Korean NES, the Comboy, and the Indian NES, the Samurai, had their release years, 1991 and 1987, removed as well. Strange, considering the only 1986 release of the NES in Europe was in Sweden, where the language is definitely not English. But I digress. If we look back at the map of the NES around the world, you may notice a black region, basically everywhere east of Germany and Italy. Both major publications and myself in the past have completely dismissed this region as having any possibility of having any official NES release. Clones from Taiwan, such as the famous Russian Dendi console or the Polish Pegasus console, have been assumed to be all that was available to the children of the 80s and 90s. As we're about to see though, in fact, the NES was released in nearly every country of Europe, even with Nintendo's approval, support, and money. To begin though, we need to take a quick history lesson. When the NES was first released outside of Japan, Nintendo's operations were minimal. 
Their USA headquarters had little experience with distribution channels needed to bring a video game console to consumers. Running the risk of failing to create the business relations with retailers needed to sell the NES, Nintendo instead partnered with Sam Borofsky in New York, who was one of the biggest Atari dealers before the 1983 video game crash. In 1986, it partnered with a company called Worlds of Wonder. Worlds of Wonder, known best for its, perhaps its Teddy Ruxpin bear, had since 1980 developed a large distribution network for its toys around America, and unlike Nintendo at the time, was fit to handle the manpower needed to release the NES on a large scale. Since the NES was being marketed as a toy rather than a video game system, Worlds of Wonder was positioned well to sell the console due to the company being known as a toy company, not a video game company. In fact, as the story goes, Worlds of Wonder demanded retailers stock at least 500 consoles for them to have access to any other Worlds of Wonder products, including the insanely popular Teddy Ruxpin bear. As Worlds of Wonder began to see various troubles around the end of 1987 before going into liquidation, Nintendo swept up its employees and distribution channels, allowing the company to begin distribution of its own products throughout the country. Funnily enough, Worlds of Wonder had an Italian subsidiary called Wonderland SPA. The company was in fact the Italian distributor for Mattel. This meant in Italy, the PAL-A Mattel version NES was, in fact, distributed by Worlds of Wonders, Italian subsidiary. In 1988, when the company went under, Mattel took sole control of the Italian subsidiary, forming Mattel SPA. Pictured at the top right here is the insert that Mattel inserted into the leftover stock from Wonderland, informing customers that any reference of Wonderland should be assumed to mean Mattel from now on. Talk about intercompany relations and everything falling into place, huh? This trend of relying on third-party companies to distribute the NES was in fact seen in every country the NES was released, and was generally country-based with a few exceptions. Even before the US had a nationwide release of the system, it was released in Singapore as the Asian version NES in June 1986 in the PAL video format. Here it was distributed by a company called Active Bokeh. Active Bokeh sublicensed the system to its distributor Uptron Electronics, which these days is actually the Singaporean distributor for Sony's PlayStation. In September, it was released in Sweden by a company called Sala. 1987 saw the majority of other countries follow too, including India, Western Europe and Australia, with each country, or sometimes countries, being handled by a local distribution company. Also in 1987, the Hong Kong version of the NES was released, with by far the rarest game available for the system, Mahjong, which was Nintendo's own version of the popular game, also seeing a release. Less than 10 copies are known to be in collector's hands. In 1990, Israel received the NES in Hebrew. In 1991, South Korea received the NES as the Comboy, and in 1993, South Africa as well. The distribution rights to the NES were also passed around quite a bit between companies. In the UK, for example, it went back and forth between companies due to the lack of popularity of the system, with five different companies handling the system over its lifespan. These companies not only handled distribution to retailers, but also advertising and marketing of the system, with the guidance of Nintendo, of course. It's for another time to discuss, however, but as it turns out, despite these distribution companies being independent of Nintendo and suitable to handle the local decision-making, Nintendo officials would often dictate advertising campaigns the companies had to follow. One employee of Nintendo's UK distributor remembers late night calls from Kyoto with bizarre worldwide advertising campaigns that would do nothing for consumers in the country. A waste of money, he remembers. Nintendo truly believed what worked in Japan or America would work everywhere else in the world. We can also see how the different distributors collaborated. In the Spanish advertisement for the NES in 1987 on the left, it's clear that both the console and the game boxes say Asian version on them. The reason? Because this advertisement was originally a pack-in flyer for the Asian version NES in 1986. The advertisement was changed later on with subtle differences between the two as you can see on the right. What makes this really strange however is that Elba is a Spanish TV maker and that they removed this on the revised version. Going back to the main discussion, however. To this day, Nintendo still utilizes third-party distributors to distribute its products. 
However, Bruxala and Active Volke are the only ones still partnered with Nintendo from the NES era. After a few years of the NES being released in Europe, Nintendo eventually formed Nintendo of Europe. With the fall of the Berlin Wall, Nintendo of Europe handled the German distribution of the NES, taking control from the previous distributor, Beinengreiber. Nintendo also positioned itself as the first contact point for the other distributors throughout Europe, despite it being clear that either Nintendo of Japan or Nintendo of America were still calling the shots, and with advertisement campaigns following a more global focus rather than localized. The company didn't take over distribution for the whole of Europe, however, with operations only focusing on Germany in the beginning. For a few more years, many of the third-party distributors that Nintendo originally contracted continued unabated, with their local knowledge and relationships being more attractive than central control. One of these companies, Stadelbauer, had the rights to distribute the NES in the German-speaking other than Germany countries since 1987, namely Austria and Switzerland. Based in Salzburg, the company had partnered with Nintendo since 1979, distributing Game & Watches in the region too, a partnership which lasted until 2014. Stadelbauer may be known to you just because they are the company that actually invented the Nintendo Mini Classic machines. Not only did they have the rights to Austria and Switzerland, however, Stadelbauer also held the rights to Nintendo's products in the whole of Eastern Europe. By the way, Switzerland is particularly interesting because of, instead of purchasing translated boxes and manuals from Nintendo, Stadelbauer instead locally printed their own French manuals and added them into the boxes of the products as seen here. An English box with both French and German manuals, however that French manual is locally printed on locally sourced paper. I propose a question. Say you have a product which is insanely popular in the first world, but after 10 years it has increasingly become obsolete. What do you do? Well, of course, you begin selling it to poor people from other countries. Indeed, in 1990, a Nintendo of America representative commented on the plan for the NES. Step 1. As the Super Nintendo would become the leading system in America, the NES would be passed down to the younger children in the family, meaning software sales were the most important aspect in the country. Step 2. In Europe, the NES was only starting to become popular, so sales of consoles and market recognition were the most important aspects of business. And finally, Step 3. As Europeans graduate to more advanced games, Nintendo's plan is to market NES to Eastern Europe and the Soviet kids. Uh-huh. In David Sheff's 1993 book, Game Over, Sheff hints at the Eastern Europe distribution of the NES, and I quote, Eastern Europe was a low priority, but it was not being written off. The Austrian Nintendo distributor introduced the NES and Game Boy into Hungary in 1991. Game Boy took off there, although sales and numbers were necessarily modest compared to France and Germany. This small tidbit in Sheff's book is just the starting point. And so we begin down the rabbit hole. In 1991, Stadelbauer's newly formed Hungary subsidiary, Stadelbauer KFT, located in Budapest, began advertising both the NES and Game Boy for sale. Games were the exact same as their Austrian versions, in German or English with a German or English packaging, but with locally printed paper instructions in Hungarian. Quite a large catalogue of games were available for the system, including third-party published games as well. Stickers on the consoles indicated their Nintendo sales country and games as well. On the left is an advertisement from 1992 showcasing the range of NES games, Game Boy and even Super Nintendo games available. And on the right we can see the Hungarian translated manual for Super Mario Bros, which these days is quite a rare collectible. Here we have a console. Various different versions were also released for it, but the Super Set is the most common and that tiny sticker up the top left indicates its Hungarian roots. As we'll see soon, this began an avalanche of releases of the NES throughout Eastern Europe. Nintendo's introduction in Hungary actually mirrors that of the rest of Europe quite closely. In October of 1992, Stadelbau announced the Hungarian Nintendo Championship. The competition was based on players obtaining the most points within a 5 minute window in Super Mario Bros. on the NES to be run in Budapest. They also outlined the plans for a nationwide competition for the following year, and I quote, As this game is not well known to Hungary yet, the competition can only take on national proportions next year. It doesn't actually appear the national competition ever was held, however. 
the country received the Club Nintendo magazine localized in Hungarian as well. From 1993, players could subscribe to the Hungarian Club Nintendo magazine, which, although was based on the other European Club Nintendo issues, originally from France and Germany, included Hungarian-specific articles as well. Perhaps one of the most interesting things to come out of the Hungarian distribution for Nintendo was a TV show called Elector Kalandor. Hosted from 1990 until 1993, for just a few minutes per week, the program was basically a call-in race of both Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario Bros. 3. Players would call in using a phone with a keypad and control Mario. Depending on the points obtained, different prizes were won. By the end of 1993, the two people that received the most points won brand new Super Nintendo consoles. Let's take a look. So yeah, that was Hungary. Chef's book was published in 1993, meaning that it was published before the end of the NES's lifespan, which of course it means it misses a few countries that Nintendo had operations. As I published before, the NES was released in South Africa in 1993 with repurposed Hong Kong NES games and a South African specific console. Under the direction from Nintendo of Europe, the distributor in the country saw minimal successes, however the Game Boy was quite popular. Like many of these countries with lax copyright laws at the time, the biggest challenge that Nintendo faced was competition by third party clones. And so, let's look at Poland. In 1991, the Bobmark International Company was founded in Poland. Having discovered an NES clone in Taiwan, the company began to sell the clone under the name Pegasus. The TV game, as it was known, was a high-quality knockoff of the NES and made millions. Poland, like many of the former countries under either the USSR or the Warsaw Pact, had nearly non-existent copyright laws and Nintendo was powerless to stop the sale of the system, or more importantly, the pirated games that sold with the system. Pegasus was so popular in the country that Nintendo was an unknown name. To the Polish people, it was simply Pegasus and nothing more. Polish gaming magazines such as Top Secret and Secret Service all started to include sections in their publication about Pegasus releases. Evidence of official Nintendo products did exist, however, with Top Secret including an NES Club section where people could exchange NES games with each other. These, however, were international versions of the games, such as German, Spanish, or Italian. By 1992, 100 games were available from Bobmark. By 1994, over 400. In February of 1994, Poland ratified its copyright laws, meaning Bobmark could no longer sell counterfeit games. Consoles, however, were unaffected. On the 6th of October 1994, representatives of Nintendo, Stadelbauer, and a company named Entertainment Systems Poland, or ESP for short, outlined the plan for Nintendo in Poland. An all-out assault on Central Europe's largest market would introduce Nintendo to the country and flood the Polish market with Nintendo products. ESP would also be the official representative of Nintendo in the country. Estimating that 90% of the game cartridges in the country were illegal, Nintendo claimed that they had refused to enter the country until strict copyright laws were enacted. Partnering with its American advertising agency, Leo Burnett, it announced plans to bombard the country with an array of advertisements promoting the NES, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy. Claiming to have allocated 300,000 American dollars for two months of advertising leading up to 1995, it's debatable actually how much was spent. Advertisements for the systems were localized versions of advertisement made by Nintendo of Europe for Germany, which were also commonly localized versions of advertisements from America. All forms of advertisements were used with magazine, radio, and television campaigns all being utilized. However, 
less television than normal, remembers one employee working at ESP at the time. ESP chose four regional distributors, Lucas Toys, ACNG, ATM, and LMS Electronic. Each of these companies had previous experience distributing electronic products from televisions to computers and electronic toys. It's important to note that ACNG's president was in fact the same as ESP's. ACNG just handled this distribution side of things while ESP handled representation. Monday, November the 14th, saw the first day of Nintendo officially being available in stores. Located in the Central Department store in Warsaw, all three platforms were available. For the Polish market, products were expensive to say the least. The NES and Game Boy each cost 2 million zloty each. The Super Nintendo, 3.8 million, or about 80 euros and 145 respectively. Higher quality games for each of the systems cost approximately half of the consoles themselves, that is 1 million for the NES and Game Boy, and 2 million for the Super Nintendo. To put this into perspective, in 1994, the average salary of a Polish person was only 5 million zloty. For an average customer to purchase an NES console with one game, it would cost more than half of one month's worth of salary, a purchase which could easily be made for much cheaper for its alternative, the Pegasus. Unsurprisingly, the console sold poorly. Due to the abundance of systems that were still unsold in other parts of Europe, NES consoles were siphoned from the warehouses of other distributors and resold in Poland. Spanish NES consoles were imported from the Spanish distributor, Spyco, and stickers were applied to the boxes with locally printed manuals and warranty cards added as well. Game Boy and Super Nintendo systems were supplied by Stadelbauer in Germany, however. The stickers displayed original Nintendo, finally in Poland. Games were standard Stadelbauer versions with either German or English boxes and manuals. Unfortunately, we don't have any photos of the manuals for the Polish NES games, but an employee of the company has confirmed that they were included. Instead, they offer a Super Nintendo console manual. In December, a second store in Warsaw began the sale of Nintendo's products, with various games such as Super Mario Bros. 3, Aladdin and Kirby's Adventure being available. Demonstration units were also available, which could even be played while the store was closed. In 1995, both ESP and Nintendo pushed on, with sell-through of Nintendo products being around 100 units per month. The Game Boy saw larger successes due to the lack of competition, of course. In December, in the Museum of Japanese Art and Technology in Krakow, a two-week exhibition of Nintendo's products was put on display to the Polish people. Titled Super Mario in Krakow, entry costs were less than a euro and allowed people to see all of Nintendo's offerings in the country and play as many games as they desired. One publication described it as looking at a free arcade rather than a museum. At the event, the regional distributor for Krakow, ATM, outlined Nintendo's plan in Poland coming into 1996. And I quote, the 16-bit Super Nintendo has enjoyed great success and has gained a large group of supporters in the country, the Game Boy 2. We have announced a sensational reduction in the price of the 8-bit NES, which will help to crush the market of fakes from the country. The NES continued to sell into 1996, however was phased out around the middle of the year, with the successes ATM described not being realised. Various different Super Nintendo consoles were released as well. The rest of Nintendo's history in Poland can be summarized quite easily. The Nintendo 64 was eventually released in the country. ATM withdrew from distributing products in the same year, along with Elemis, leaving only Lucas Toys and ACNG. In 1999, ESP gave up the rights to Nintendo in the country. Saddlebauer bought Lucas Toys, which became the main distributor in the country, and started taking the Polish market more seriously with properly translated boxes and manuals. In the same year, Optimus SA, now CD Project of The Witcher fame, became a distributor for the products of Nintendo in the country, with, guess who, the same CEO of ASP. The Game Boy and its various derivatives still hold the record for the most successful products in Poland. In September 2013, it was reported that a total of 350 Wii consoles had sold in the whole year. In 2014, Stadelbauer failed to renew their contract with Nintendo. Things still haven't gotten better. Despite efforts to enter the market, Nintendo from 1994 
up until today, have never taken the Polish market seriously. Games are still not translated to Polish, and for many years, especially during the Stadelbauer days, no advertising was done at all. Such is life for Poland, I guess. Although Poland and Hungary are perhaps the largest markets the NES was released in Eastern Europe, it doesn't mean it wasn't released elsewhere. Most were in partnership with Stadelbauer as well. In Slovenia, 1992, Stadelbauer signed with a newly formed Laser Plus company to distribute Nintendo products in the country. Sell through of the NES was fairly poor, however, with two Super Nintendo consoles selling every day and four Game Boy units, the company was successful in bringing the Nintendo to the country. In 1993, Stadelbauer signed a contract with MPM Spol of the Czech Republic for distribution rights to Nintendo's products in both the Czech Republic and Slovakia. However, before this, Nintendo was actually officially in Czechoslovakia since 1988 through direct deals with Stadelbauer and retailers. A huge array of unexamined material is available from this region and I really look forward to exploring it in the future. In 1994, both Serbia and Montenegro received the Game Boy and the Super Nintendo, distributed by a local company called Biosoft. However, the NES doesn't appear to have been mass marketed, but it likely was at least available if requested. Also in 1994, Sadlbauer partnered with a Croatian company called Aklu Export Import to release the NES, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy. This company chose three regional sub-distributors, Pinel, Temple Star and Ugo Art. Pinel, in 1995, became the distributor for Bosnia as well. In 1995, the Omni Toys Company was formed. In 1996, they began to handle the distribution of Nintendo products in Romania, however, it is unknown whether the NES was distributed by them, and if it was, it's likely they were in incredibly small numbers. In Greece, Cyprus, and possibly Macedonia and Albania, Itoku Hellas the Greek subsidiary of the Japanese company Hitoku, distributed the NES with full Greek translated manuals. In Russia, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, as well as the other CIS countries, that is for example Ukraine, Belarus and Georgia at the time, the Stiepler company, that is the company behind the Dendi Famiclone, was given distribution rights to Nintendo's products in 1994. Indeed, the company responsible for the majority of NES clones in Russia and its bordering countries became the official distributor for Nintendo. In an interview, the director of the company remembers the contract, and I quote, There was a clause in the agreement with the Americans that there were no claims to his company about the Dendi, and accordingly it can continue to sell them. However, Stiepler's retail stores that it had opened since the success of the Dendi, and I quote, should not have the Mega Drive consoles of the main competitor of Nintendo at the time, Sega. Nintendo clearly knew where their priorities were. It's quite interesting seeing official Nintendo products with the Dendi logo on them like these. There was even a popular television show during that time that was all about video games, Nintendo included. Let's take a quick look at that. What Поголовно у всех есть какая-нибудь игровая система и несколько игрушек к ней. Кстати, было бы интересно узнать, сколько... Oh, and also, other parts of Africa and the Middle East even got the NES too, like the NES from Egypt pictured here. As we've seen, the NES knew no borders. Although research still needs to be conducted, we can see that attempts to market the console were made throughout all of Europe, well beyond what is commonly known. Other regions of the world, such as the Middle East and South America, for example, also received official releases of the NES. However, with not enough time in this presentation to explore those regions, they must be left to a later date. I hope everyone's enjoyed this presentation, and hope you've learned a thing or two about Nintendo and the NES. Hopefully, my book is finished soon, and it will outline everything we've already discussed, and more. I hope everybody has enjoyed this presentation, and has learned a thing or two about Nintendo and the NES. I hope to present to you again soon about the NES and explore more research as it's found. Again, thanks for listening, stay safe, and enjoy PAX Online.